Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Practical Programming with Dr. Su. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. In the last several videos, we discussed how to create 3D surfaces with the lighting effect and color map. Those surfaces look nice, but they are still not very realistic. 3D objects can be made to look more interesting and realistic by adding image textures to their surfaces. Support for image textures has been built into modern GPU on the hardware level. Here, I will show you how to map 2D image textures onto various surfaces in WebGPU applications. When a texture is applied to a surface, each point on the surface corresponding to a point in the texture. Here you can see in this image, its size is 256 by 256 pixels. The texture coordinates T UV in WebGPU are defined in the range of 0 and 1. In this case, a point, for example, in, on the image is a point of 1, 28, 64 corresponding the point, point 5 and point 25 in the texture coordinates. So the point on the image has a 1 to 1 mapping the texture coordinates. Note that the value of texture coordinates u and v can be beyond the range of 0 and 1. In this case, their coordinates are outside the image if beyond 1. But this value are still valid as texture coordinates. Values over the range of 0 and 1 in the text coordinate system can be used for repeating the texture image. In order to map a texture onto a surface, we need a pair of texture coordinates u and v for each vertex. Those texture coordinates indicate which point in the image is mapped to the vertex. With an image texture, a color is computed by sampling the image based on a pair of texture coordinates. The image defines a function that takes texture coordinates as input and returns a color as its output. Here we will use the gate tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download the source code used in the last video. Now open a command prompt window and run the following command, git clone, and paste this link. This will generate a WebGPU32 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last uh, video. Now we want to change the name of WebGPU32 folder to GPU33. Rename Web 33 and CD into it. 33. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this welcome page. Now here contains all the source code used in the last uh, video. We can then open a new terminal window and run the command npm install to restore the npm packages. OK, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the code modules folder. First, uh, we need to add a new TypeScript file called texture data. 
.ts to the src folder. So we add a new file called texture data ts file. Then we add uh, some code to this file. Here, the get texture uh, function takes the image file and the address mode u as well as address mode v as its input arguments. The GPU address mode the property describes the behaviors of the sampler if the sample uh, footprint extends beyond the bound of the sample texture. Here we have a separate address mode for each direction in the texture coordinate system because we have address mode u and address mode v. This address mode has three options. The first one is called clamp to edge. This means the texture coordinates are clamped between 0 and 1 range. Another option is repeat. This means the texture coordinates wrap to the other side of the texture. Finally, the third option is mirror repeat. This means the texture coordinates wrap to the other side of the texture, but the texture is flipped when the integer part of the coordinates is odd. Uh, inside this function, we use a HTML image object to load our texture image. Here we assign the uh, image file to the image src attribute. Next, we create a bitmap from the image by calling the create image bitmap methods. We then use the dimension of the uh, image uh, bitmap to create a texture and a sample. You can see here we call create a texture to create our texture. Here the size we use the image of width and the height. So we define the format as RGBA8, you know. And here is the usage, texture binding, copy destination, and run attachment. Here we call the create a sampler to create our sampler. You can see here we use the linear field to interpret uh, the color. Here address mode we assign to the input address mode u and address mode v. Finally, we copy our image to the uh, texture. You can see we call copy external image to texture. Here the source is our bitmap uh, image and the texture, we just create the texture from here. We assign this texture to the texture attribute. Finally, this function returns two variables. One is our texture and another one is a sampler. Okay, now we can save this file. Well, we can close it. Next, we can rename the uh, common code called uh, surface.ts file to texture.ts file. So here we rename this surface to the texture. Now we can replace the, its content with the new code. Uh, this code is very similar to that used in the last uh, video, except that we make some uh, changes. First, we need to import the text data from text data, the get texture function from the text data instead of from surface data. Another thing is we change the original create surface with color map to currently create a shape with texture. So we change the, this function name. Another thing is we here, this is UV data. Originally is a color data, the color map data. Right now we use the UV data because we discuss the texture mapping instead of color map. Another thing is we change the color map buffer to UV buffer right now with the UV data. Another change is inside the pipeline here at the shader, uh, shader location 2. Before here is uh, 
the color data. Right now is UV data. So we change the array stride from 12 to 8 because right now UV calling is two dimension. So flag 32 by 2 instead of by 3. So here we need to change to 8. Another change is here. You can see here is new code. Here we call the get texture methods to obtain the texture and the sample data. Next, we add to the uniform binding group by the sampler, the binding location at the two, and the binding location at the three is the texture. This is a new code. We add a, a sampler and a texture to the uniform binding group in order to incorporate our texture mapping. So this is a new code. Finally, here in the random path, we said at the location two is a UV buffer instead of the uh, color buffer. Now we finish this uh, modification to this file. So we can save this file now. Next, we need to make some changes to the cedar.ts file. Open this file, cedar.ts file. First, we need to replace this content with the new code. And this uh, Cedar code is also very similar to that used in the last uh, video, except that inside Vertex Cedar, you can see here, uh, we define the input struct. Here, we change the color location to, we change the color uh, to the UV, is a vector two because it's two dimension UV coordinates. And also the output struct here, we use V U, uh, UV instead of V uh, I mean color. Inside this main method, we also change the V color with, with uh, V UV to input UV here. In the fragment cedar, you can see here we have an input structure. You can see here, location two, we use the VUV instead of uh, V color. Inside this main method, you can see this is the new code. We call the texture sample. Sample is the method. They take texture data and the text sample and they input the uh, UV coordinates data to get the texture color. Here, texture data and the text sampler is defined with the uniform buffer here. It's a sampler at uh, binding two. This uh, at binding three is texture, is a sampler. So we put the texture sampler, sampler and text data into this message input, as input here. So from this message, we can get the RGB color for the texture color. Finally, you can see the final color here. We use the texture color instead of the V color, uh, color input. But here we use texture color as our final color. So this is a change compared to the code, uh, Cedar code used in the last uh, video. Now we finish the modification to this uh, file so we can save this file. You can see this texture example involves a lot of code. In order to give you more time to digest the code, I will stop here for today. In the following few video series, I will show you how to map 2D texture image onto a variety of 3D objects, including uh, simple 3D shapes as well as 3D simple and parametric surfaces. Most of the examples presented in this video series are based on my recently published book, Practical Web GPU Graphics. From this link, drsu.net.com, you can see the details about this book. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video series. From this link, you can download the source code used in this uh, video series. I also created a live demo at this link. This demo shows the live results by running the example projects presented in this video series. I will end this video here.
See you next time. Bye.